The Belgian artist Constant Montal represents something so perfect and beautiful to me, which feels almost impossible to articulate. An ethereal painter of Elysian fields, he painted slow, idealized, and contemplative scenes. With ferns blowing in the wind, graceful bodies bending over and standing in a pure eternal stillness. He brings human life into the realm of poetry, a serene, ideal reality in which ugliness or brutality are nowhere to be found. You can see the synthesis of Grecian and French gracefulness and culture. His work looks almost like a collage, because in almost every one, the forms in his pictures, whether they're mountains, plains, or human figures, lack shadow and color gradations which create a feeling of depth. the way that light naturally plays on a worldly scene. So the idea of perspective and three-dimensionality is at least in a technical sense lacking, although it feels almost unnecessary and implied anyway, which is what makes him so unique and interesting as a European visual artist. His work is impressionistic, but instead of developing a reconstructed, blurry 3D universe, he focuses on the texture itself almost taking you out of that typical Western vision of space. Montald was also very interested in monumental paintings, which adds to his deep sense of presence, atmosphere, and the entire world that he's bringing into existence, of repose, of subtle detachment and dissolution into another realm, an intuitive, unreal place, which his modern art techniques, influenced by his contemporaries, help to visualize. But he does this with just enough balance and grace and beauty to make it still feel real, and not too deconstructed in technical experiments. However, Montald is highly decorative as well, while also being monumental. He was originally trained in decorative arts in Belgium. The way he uses these techniques, using a limited amount of colors in each canvas, sometimes muddy or pastel, but with many touches of gold, to bring you into that ideal and imaginary place, while using technique in an almost primitivist way. This works extremely well in his pictures and feels archaic in a grounded sense. Yet the overwhelmingly classical associations of high culture in his works are still deeply felt, which I'll talk more about in the second half of the video. This wonderful painting is called The Fountain of Inspiration, painted in 1907. It's actually a huge canvas, four by five meters wide. The director of the Royal Museum of Fine Arts in Belgium, Michel Draguet, explains. In the fountain, he shows us the Elysian fields, an ideal world with its perfect humanity, with men and women totally devoid of sexuality. Humanity in its original purity, seen visiting the fountain of inspiration, and in drinking from this, they will realize a dream, the dream of art, which for Montald can be called the decorative feeling. Notice how decorative this work is. Similar to Klimt, showing a shower of gold fluttering through space and his way of treating blue. It's a kind of daydream, this depiction of an ideal world. It's his statement about what he believes is the most perfect vision of human life, the timeless eternal ideal. When I analyze this painting, I see a world of paradoxes, it seems basically like a collage of two-dimensional planes. However, the way that they're put together is trying to imply depth, which it manages to convey successfully. 
you get the sense that each cutout is not interacting with the others at all, creating a frozen effect. The painting isn't in any way lively, yet the entire scene somehow is. It feels teeming with hidden movement, grace and sensitivity, life. Add to that the ubiquitous sense of water and falling away, melting, which even the trees seem to engage in. All of this makes it a truly interesting and unique picture, unlike anything I've seen before. It's sort of a mixture of classical simplicity and tranquility, and of things fading away. A very neoclassical view of Greek times. The person who first perpetuated this idea of classical simplicity and stillness, or softness, was Johann Winckelmann, the major figure who spurred on neoclassicism and who practically invented the discipline of art history. In his famous work, Reflection on the Imitation of Greek Works in Painting and Sculpture, he wrote, There is but one way for the moderns to become great and perhaps unequaled, that is by imitating the ancients. With such eyes did Michelangelo, Raphael, and Poussin see the works of the ancients. They partook of good taste at its source, and Raphael did this in the very land where it had begun. We know that he sent young artists to Greece in order to sketch for him the relics of antiquity. It is not only nature which the votaries of the Greeks find in their works, but still more, something superior to nature. Ideal beauties, brain-born images. To the Greek climate we owe the production of taste, and from there it spread at length over all the politer world. Every invention brought by foreigners to that nation was simply the first seed of what it became afterwards, which assumed new form and character in a country chosen, as Plato says, by Minerva, to be inhabited by the Greeks, as productive of every kind of genius. But this taste was not only original among the Greeks, but seemed also quite peculiar to their country, it seldom went abroad without loss. The famous line from Winckelmann is the noble simplicity and sedate grandeur in the gesture and expression of Greek works. This line and its accompanying implications set off a whole world of neoclassical scholarship and culture, focusing only on the greatness of the classical world, which for years made the field biased in favor of Winckelmann's somewhat skewed understanding of it. The culture of the Greeks the beautiful classical harmony and philosophy of life is something which Montald most definitely is not the only one to go back to and try to emulate in his art. Winkelmann also wrote, The expression of so great a soul is beyond the force of mere nature. It was in his own mind that the artist was to search for the strength of spirit with which he marked his marble. Greece enjoyed artists and philosophers in the same persons, and the wisdom of more than one Metrodorus directed art and inspired its figures with more than common souls. For the more tranquility reigns in a body, the fitter it is to draw the true character of the soul, which in every excessive gesture seems to rush from her proper center, and being hurried away by extremes becomes unnatural wound up to the highest pitch of passion, she may force herself upon the duller eye, but the true sphere of her action is simplicity and calmness. During World War I, art became a luxury item, and Montald painted smaller pictures that he made based on what he could find in his own neighborhood, of nature and landscape. A few years after the war, he co-founded the Society of Monumental Art, its main aim being to make art accessible to everyone by decorating public buildings. <laughs> 